Hey everybody, it's Sandy and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to do watercolor flower video number seven. can't believe we're at seven already. So this is also for the watercolor blog hop hosted by Pretty Pink Posh. Lots of information on their blog about it and lots of goodies to give away, so go check it out. The card I'm going to do today is going to be on this Artistico traditional white cold press watercolor cardstock. And it's 140 pounds, nice paper, like really good, good, good paper. And it's on a block, but I took it off and chopped it in quarters and adhered it with this delicate frog tape. This stuff is not going to rip my paper. And I'm going to use my new whole buying watercolors. I'm kind of getting hooked on these really fast. The little container is supposed to be for travel and it's got those little palettes. It has a little travel brush, and this is actually a very good quality travel brush. I haven't really seen any that are this nice of a brush. It's a number eight. And the watercolors, I'll show you more about them tomorrow, but the watercolors are in these little trays with magnets on the bottom, so they stay in place, which is pretty slick, especially if you're traveling. And I'm going to also use this big three-quarter inch wash brush to put water down first, and this is a brush by the Silver Brush Company. So I'm just putting water across it, and it's adhered down to this wooden cutting board just to hold it in place so it'll stay relatively flat. And then I'm going to use the brush from the Holbein set and just start dabbing color on. And look at how beautifully this just spreads. I mean, Tomorrow you're going to see some videos on watercolor. I'm finally getting around to really explaining what I've learned about watercolor and doing some tests and I'm going to show you exactly how a lot of different watercolor brands go on to different watercolor brand papers and how they spread and everything. And this one just, I'm, I just find it delicious and <laughs> looking at all of this, this color just spreading and bleeding and blooming all over the cardstock just makes me happy. So this technique is called lost and found. And what I have done, I, I was playing with this for like a full day before I got to this one because I've just been having so much fun with it. I'm just putting color everywhere and then after I get this whole technique done, then I look for the hidden image. I'm not really, as I'm dabbing the color, I'm not thinking about what image it's going to be. Like I just, I'm putting color on and just having fun with it. So later on, you're going to see what image I pull out of it. But you could do this and plan out exactly where you're going to put all these dabs of color. So that's the only reason I'm explaining that right now. So the thing is all covered now with paint in the way that I want it to be. And I could just let it sit there and dry. Or I could do an extra fun step, and that is to add some salt. I know this is going to be crazy. Paulina at Pretty Pink Posh, when I told her I did this with salt, she's like, are you kidding me? You've got to be nuts. And salt, what it seems to do to this, I read this on a blog. They didn't have any pictures of it, but somebody mentioned salt as part of a technique. And I went, I wonder what it does to the paint. And so I just started testing, sprinkling it on. If you leave it on for a really long time, it just keeps soaking up more and more and more of the paint. And so you get these giant kind of blooms of really lightened color. And I'm going to leave it on for just a little while. And you're going to watch it soak up the paint because the salt goes from being white to being colored. You get these dark spots. And if you start wiping it off while it's still wet, then you could get streaks of color. So you need to be a little bit careful about exactly how you're going to handle getting the salt off. If you let it dry entirely on there, those the white spots that you see growing around each of the salt particles will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it starts really taking everything over. I wanted for this one to see what would happen if I just did some texture. So I dabbed off a few of the extra spots, the places where it was really dark, and I dabbed off a few other spots here and there just to add some paper towel texture to it. And then I decided you know, I just wanted to add a, a little bit more texture here and there. And then I got out the heat gun because I wanted to stop the salt from absorbing even more of the color. So it didn't really have the chance 
to do that full like giant bloom. There was one that I tried and it just got so big it took over everything and then there was no paint left on the paper and it kind of does eat away at the surface eventually if you leave it on too long. So you don't want to do too much of it but it's really a fun technique to experiment with. And it's not called the lost and found technique. If you find that somewhere, um, the salt technique, I, I don't know what they call it, but the uh, lost and found idea that I'm putting forth in this is looking for what the image is behind all this when, it's, when this is all revealed. So we're gonna see that in just a few minutes. So I got most of the, the salt somewhat dried because that's going to allow me to really gently rub it. I've got a soft, soft Kleenex, and I'm just kind of trying to rub over top of the salt so that I don't spread color all over the place and that I don't rip the paper. Because this is, like I said, going to eat away at the paper surface, and you want to go really gently with it. And if you wait too long, it could like really get stuck in the paper. But you can see here I've got a bunch of really interesting little splotches. And what I started seeing was a path. That little yellow spot was kind of the sun trailing down and there's like a little trail and the rest of this is just piled up flowers. So what's left now is to find the image that's in there. And I'm going to just add some shadows to bring that scene out. Now, a lot of you may say, I don't see that at all. I only see is splotches. Well, you'll see that in a few minutes as it comes out. There's a, a bunch of different things that you could end up seeing in there. I mean, this is like the cloud game when you were a little kid and you would look in the clouds and see a bunny rabbit or a kitty cat. Look into something like this and see what you see and what are the, the shapes you see? What are the, the scenes that you might see? Is, is there a mountain? Is there a beach? Is it a seashell? There's so many possibilities for what you can see and everybody will see something different. So I'm gonna speed this up now so you can kind of see as it develops and as I add more shadows, I'm just gonna add them underneath, like to, to add some depth to a few of the bushes and then I'll I'll do a little scribbling and I'm, I'm kind of trying to find some terminology to use when I start doing these things and I'm kind of calling this dancing. Like my brush is just dancing around the flowers to add some depth to them. And I'm just using colors straight from the palette in the whole bind set. I'm not really mixing colors except for layering them on top of each other. So it's staying fairly pure to what the colors are in the set. You could do this with, of course, any combination. And you could probably do something somewhat similar with any kind of paints. You don't have to have these like crazy expensive ones. I don't know how well the initial bleeding and blending will go with other paints and with other papers. I'll, I'll just put that out there. So you'd have to play around with what works and what comes up with the right kind of shapes, the right kind of colors, the right kind of mix. But the salt is supposed to work on everything because it was there was like one mention of it on a children's website, for like children's arts and crafts things, and another on an art journal page that I saw. And I don't remember where it was. It was just something that stuck in my head that I trolled past at one point and kept saying I gotta try it. And so when a watercolor blog hop came along and I wanted to come up with something really cool, I thought, I gotta try this. So it did take me quite a number of tries to get down to something I was happy with, but I have lots more to share on this. this I just wanted the first one to be super special. So I'll do more of these in the future with some of the other things that I learned because it's a whole lot of fun. You may have even done this kind of thing when you were in school because this seems very much like a children's thing to add salt to something to see what happens. But the adult and artist part is going to be in the adding of the scene and creating a little scene with it. So I'm just adding more layers of flowers and greens and adding just shadows to things to allow those little white spots to be little flowers. There's just so much you can do with these. I, I like having way too much fun with this and got way too excited when I when I started really seeing the scene appear in my head. And back here, I wanted to add a horizon line with some trees in the distance and somehow make it a little bit of a, I don't know. So you can, you can tell that there's light coming from back there and that sort of thing. 
and I decided to create a, a little road shape, just a little curve, so it would feel like like there's a, a natural path there that you would walk down with just piled and piled and piled flowers on either side. So all that's left is to put the card together. So I'm layering it on some white and then onto purple cardstock. And I'm just gonna leave it pretty plain except for adding my sentiment section to it. And that I wanted to use the Pretty Pink Posh border die with this uh, little stitching on either side of it and put it across the bottom. It's on watercolor cardstock so it'll match the same texture as the paper. And then I got out my Ellen Hudson stamp set. I really like this one, Amazing Women. It's got great sentiments in it. Pressed this into our girlfriends. And I've got some Mama Elephant ink that I will stamp it in. And I'm going to stamp it off to the side because I wanted to do something else on this this little, um, little banner across my card. So I'll stamp my sentiment, have all that in place. And then I got out some silk ribbon. And actually I attach it to my card first before I put the silk ribbon on and I attached it using power tabs. So the power tabs go on, the little backs peel off. These give it a little bit of dimension without giving it too much. That's why I really love them and they're also super sticky so if you're putting them on any slick surface at all, which this isn't, but anything, it's, it's just going to stick to anything in the world. So here's that silk ribbon that I mentioned that I got out. And I tied a knot in it, and I wanted to not have to tie a double knot because I didn't want it to be really thick. So I'm adhering that with a quarter of a power tab on either side underneath of that ribbon. So all I have to do is kind of uh, flare it, uh, fold it in half, and cut it so that it would have two points. And then it's adhered to that card base so that it doesn't have to actually be tied a second time. And it's just a really peaceful, sweet scene on a card. And it's made with salt. How nuts is that? I just can hardly even believe that it worked as beautifully as it did. And I'm excited to see what else I can do with this. So here's a couple of the others in the watercolor series if you want to go check those out. And I will see you guys later. This weekend I've got a whole bunch of watercolor stuff coming up that I've been promising for a long time. So be sure to come back. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.